Source A, Trading Salt for Gold, the Ancient Kingdom of Ghana. Between the 9th and 11th centuries AD, the Kingdom of Ghana was rich. So rich, in fact, that its dogs wore golden collars and its horses wore silken rope halters and slept on plush carpets. Based on animal luxuries alone, it is no wonder that foreigners touted Ghana's kings as the richest men in the world. Certainly, they were living the high life, but how did they do it? Today, there's a country named Ghana in Western Africa. It is named after the ancient kingdom of Ghana, but the ancient kingdom of Ghana was in a different place. The ancient kingdom of Ghana is located within today's borders of Mauritania, Mali, and Senegal in Western Africa. Back then, this land had an abundance of resources and Ghana literally sat on a gold mine. This allowed Ghana's rulers to trade for many years. Its leaders' actions in the country's great location led to Ghana becoming very wealthy. Ancient Ghana was called Wagaduju, Wagadu, or Akhtar. Most of what is known of the countries back then is based on writing of Arab travelers who came in contact with the nation's people. Ghana was actually the title given to the Wagaduju kings and was also used by the Islamic writers to describe the rich and mysterious place they observed. Evidence of Ghana's occupation dates back to the fourth century. It was several hundred years later that it became established as a nation by a tribe known as the Soninki. The Soninki leaders have been credited with the early strengthening of Wagaduju and the expansion of its territories. By 1000 BC, the nation had undergone an important expansion. Its rulers had taken control of the land between the upper Niger and Senegal rivers, which was rich in gold. Having control of this land meant that Ghana would become a leading force in the Trans-Saharan trade network. This was a trade route that went across the Saharan desert. The first question asks you for the title and topic of source A. You'll have to go back here and notice that source A, trading salt for gold, the ancient kingdom of Ghana, that would support you with the first question. The next says, what does the author want you to remember? You wanna think about what is the repeated idea? What do we learn about the ancient kingdom of Ghana? If a younger sibling or a cousin or a friend were to ask you, what did you learn today about the ancient kingdom of Ghana? You wanna tell them what you would remember, what the author wants you to remember. That's your statement here. And then here it asks you which statement states a central or repeated idea. So I would look back to what you wrote here to help you out with this question here to think about what was an idea that was repeated, what was an idea that was stated more than one time that the author really wants you to be thinking about. Then it asks you about the image. The image in source A is here and there's even a caption here to help you with the image. The caption states a trade caravan traveling in Africa. Ghana played an important role in early trans-Saharan trade. We notice the camels here. We notice that a caravan includes a bunch of people. So that's also noticed here. We also probably have an idea of some of the materials that are on the camel's back because we know those are some of the goods and, and materials that they'll be trading. That'll help you with how the image connects to the text as well as the author's purpose in including the image. Great job, guys. Keep it up.